Hey, so we're going to start working through Adobe Encore. Um, I'm using Creative Suite 4 now. I started using Adobe Encore in version 2. I think it might be up to version 5 now, and it hasn't really changed all that much. So if you're using Creative Suite 3, 2, 1, or any of the earlier versions, it'll probably still look quite similar. Um, when you open Adobe Encore up, it's going to look similar to this, except you probably won't have the recent projects as mine are. Um, we're going to want to create a new project, so click New Project, and we're going to now look at the settings. I've got to keep these videos short because I've got a 10 minute limit, and some stuff in Adobe Encore is quite technical, it's quite tricky, so I'm going to have to spend longer explaining it. So I'll keep it in stages, and we'll use just setting this up as step one. Now we want to give the project a name, so let's call it uh, Attempt 1. We need to set a location. Now the location is quite important. When you use any of the template menus or you create any of your own menus, when you import files into Encore, it will actually duplicate menus and it will reference videos and it will do all sorts of little tricks. If you don't know where you've set your location to and you need to copy it onto another computer or you need to access parts of it, you're going to find yourself quite stuck. So make sure you put it in a decent location. Now mine's set up to be in an intro folder in Adobe Encore because that's what this video is. So on your project make sure you make yourself a folder, make sure you know where it is and what it is. Keep it quite simple. Now we're going to offer a DVD, we're not even going to come close to looking at Blu-ray and I can tell you why. Quite simply most DVD players won't play your own authored Blu-ray disc unless you've got a seriously expensive Blu-ray burner. So let's keep it simple, let's work with DVDs, we don't even need Blu-ray right now for what we're using it for. We're English so we're using a standard of PAL. Now if you've got options to set the other stuff up, we work in dimensions of 720 by 576 that's the frame rate of PAL television. Uh, if we're widescreen we're on an aspect ratio of 1.42 we deal with the lower field first, we're using MPEG-2 codec. That's quite important, the MPEG-2 is the standard for what video is when using DVD. We work on a frame rate of 25 because that's what British British TV standard is. Um, if we want to look in the advanced settings we can, and it'll tell us the maximum audio video bit rate is 9.4 megabits per second. As you found out in the previous video, there is a very good reason for that. The audio transcoding, we can choose whether we want MPEG-1, PCM or Dolby Digital, it's entirely up to you, I'll just use what it comes out as. So we've got a name, we've got a location, we're in PAL, we're using DVD. Click OK and it's going to load your project up. That might take a little while. Now while that's loading up, I'll take you to the folder that I've got set up for where this is being stored. It's right here. As we can see, I've got a video in here, tree. I've got the NCOR file, which is the Adobe Encore file, and I've got this attempt one folder. That wasn't there. Adobe Encore's put this folder there. It's got a cache folder with not a lot in right now, and it's got a sources folder, which eventually will have some menus in, and a couple of other files. That is why it's important to know where you saved it. Now, when Adobe Encore loads up, it will probably look something quite similar to this. It's quite intimidating. We don't really know what's going on. We've got a project area which is mostly a bin. We can import things like menus, assets, timelines, etc. We can also set up new menus, timelines, etc. We've got a little button down here that is the create new folder, create new menu, create new timeline, etc. etc. Um, in the middle, this is where we see everything that's going on. We can watch videos in the monitor when we've imported them. We'll see menus in this menus tab here. And the flowchart is where we link it all together. Now the most important bit to look at is down in, for right now is down in the bottom right. We've got a resource section here. Now CS4 has got Resource Central, which will link to the Adobe site and let you get off your hands on loads of templates. Additionally, in the library tab, we've got uh, we've got uh, buttons, images, backgrounds, layer sets, text, shapes, layers, and more importantly, on the far left, we've got menus. If you look in sets, we've got various sets of menus. And as you click through them, you can see the different menus loading up. Yeah, let's use this confetti menu right there. Double click it, it loads it into the project. Now this tutorial is nearly over, I just want to show you this. We've got the confetti menu. It's also imported in .m2v, which tells me that there's a video playing, a video background, which I'll show you a little bit later on. 
Uh, the most important bit is right here. If I go into that folder again, which I foolishly closed, I know it's on my desktop. Training videos, anybody? There we go. Encore, intro, attempt one. If I go into that sources now, there is a menus folder, and that confetti menu has loaded itself into my project. So it's actually duplicated that menu into my project. If I made my own menu in Photoshop, again, when I import it, it would duplicate that version into this folder here, which is why you need to set that location. That's really critical. Now that we've imported a menu, we can see a menu there. We can start to have a look around. It still doesn't make much sense, and I'm going to run out of time. So I'm going to call that tutorial to an end right there.